I'm going to go over five proofs very quickly that Matthew chapter 24 cannot be written to Christians. Okay? If you have your King James Bible, open it up to Matthew chapter 24. We're going to look at verse uh, 14 first. It says, In this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Okay? There is no gospel of the kingdom preached in the Pauline epistles. Paul never told anybody that the gospel is that we preach is the gospel of the kingdom. He defines the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4 and doesn't mention anything about a kingdom. Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, what's wrong with you? Are you saying that Apostle Paul preached another gospel? Or that his gospel was not from the kingdom. And so, Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, if Apostle Paul's gospel was not from the kingdom of heaven, where, where did his gospel came from? Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, what's wrong with you? Read your Bible. Study it. And it's funny, because you can really see the real motivation behind the whole thing is a Catholic works-based salvation system. Why? Because they believe that they have to endure to the end to be saved. Verse 13. <laughs> Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, what's wrong with you? Jesus said, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Is not works system, but faith. For you shall be saved by faith. Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, what's wrong with you? Read your Bible. Study it. Verse 16, Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. What are Christians doing in Judea? Hmm? Jews are over there. <laughs> Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, What's wrong with you? Did you not know that, there are more than 170,000 Christian Israeli citizens in Israel today, but sadly, 90% of them are not holy, but, earthly. And because of that, Jesus said, Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. For then shall be, great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Read your Bible. Study it. Verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Uh, well, the posties don't understand. They read it, but they don't get it. How can the Antichrist stand in the holy pr place? Our body is the temple of God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. Read it. Look it up. Pause the video and look it up. The temple of God for a Christian is your body. How can the Antichrist stand in there? And how can you see him standing in there? It's talking about a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem where the Antichrist sets himself up to be worshipped. It's talking about a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem where the Antichrist sets himself up to be worshipped. Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, what's wrong with you? Did you not know that, the man of sin, exalts, himself above all that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, actually taking the place of God? Many think this temple is an earthly building made with human hands. Paul said in many places that the temple was the body of Christ. Paul likened the church to a building fitly framed together and said it was growing unto an holy temple in the Lord. From these and other scriptures it is plainly evident the temple of God is not some earthly building, but people that God has purposed to dwell in. The temple that the man of sin sits as God is people. Made in the image and likeness of God, man was intended to be God's dwelling place. This dwelling place of the man of sin called the son of perdition, is apostate humanity completely given over to the evil principle that all men are born with. Ephesians 2 2 3. The man of sin will be revealed. However, even in this days, only the elect of God will be able to see what is taking place. The world, 
as a whole, will be blinded by strong delusion. They will in fact partake of the spirit that inspires the man of sin. Ma Gesù è uno spirito. Gesù non è uno spirito. Gesù è una persona, è un uomo. Ma Gesù è uno spirito. Gesù non è uno spirito. The son of perdition that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God. And who is that man that is worshipped? The words of every pope's crown are this. Vicar, son of God. It's talking about a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, where the Antichrist sets himself up to be worshipped. No, Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger. It's not talking about that. For the temple of God is not made of concrete and sand mixed together, but made, made of people. Read your Bible. Study it. Go down to verse 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Show me where Paul ever told a Christian to keep the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Show it to me. You can go to Romans chapter 13, verse 9, and look at the list of commandments that Christians are supposed to keep, and you will find that the Sabbath day is not mentioned. How can this be written to Christians, then, in Matthew chapter 24? <laughs> oh, Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, what's wrong with you? Did you not know that there are? 262 messianic organizations operating in Israel, and this means that there are more than 500,000 messianic Jews in Israel today, that keep the Sabbath. Oh Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, ask yourself, are the messianic Jews Christians or not? And so, the answer is in Galatians, 3.26. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed, and that is according to the promise, Galatians 3.26. According to the promise. According to the promise. O oh, Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger. Do you know what the promise is? Finally, look at verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. They shall see the, what? The sign. Who requires a sign? Well, you might want to look up 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, and see that it's the Jews that require a sign. Oh, Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, what's wrong with you? This Bible verse is telling you that, there shall not only appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, but they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This Bible verse is telling you that, this will be the end of this world as we know it. The great and terrible day of the Lord. There will be no Jews requiring a sign on that day for they will have no time for that. For as in the days of Noah entered into the ark, they knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They will have no time, no time, for requiring a sign. Read your Bible. Study it. All post-tribbers must use Matthew chapter 24 to prove their system. O oh, Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, I am not post-tribulation believer. For I believe in pre-tribulation rapture. And so, Brother Brian, Brian Denelinger, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, including Matthew 24.